Today, I'm going to show you guys how to look up the prices of your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I get this question a lot, namely on my Instagram, and it's actually pretty straightforward, so I thought I'd just make a video to show you how to look them up for yourself. First, we're going to go over what you need to be aware of on your card before you can look it up. You'll need the set number, the edition, and the overall condition of the card. For this, if we look at it, I would call this card near mint. You don't see any blemishes, any creases or bends, and the edges look nice and clean. The set number is going to be this CT03-EN006, and on this one it says limited edition. Limited edition normally means that it was printed in some kind of promotional packaging. Sometimes you will see a first edition stamp, and sometimes there won't say an edition, which means it's an unlimited run. The reason that you're going to want to know the set number specifically is because many cards have multiple printings, like this Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. Here we've got a movie promo, and here we've got the reprint of it from the Legendary Collection uh, Kaiba box. Here we can see this is a super rare, and here we've got a secret rare. So if you were to look up this name, you would get both results. But if you look up the set number, it'll pull up the specific card that you're curious about. Going back to condition, if we look at this blue eye shining dragon, we can see that the corners aren't quite as clean. It's got a little bit of surface miss going on, but it still looks pretty good overall. Some people might consider this to also be near mint, but some people are pretty picky and might call that lightly played. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're gauging your card. To contrast even further, this poor blue eyes has been around the block a bit, has creases. This card would be considered damaged or heavily played. It is not in the best of condition. The condition of your card is going to strongly impact the value of it, especially for older collectible cards. So keep that in mind as we venture into the interwebs. There are two main sites that I use when I am looking up prices, eBay and TCG Player. But you can also use sites like Troll and Toad or Amazon to get a third opinion. So if we're wanting to look up the value of this Haman that we found in our collection, we're going to start by putting in this set number here. So we will enter that. And that's going to pull up 33 results. Normally, when I'm trying to gauge a value of a card, I'm going to click on buy it now. That's going to clean out any auctions from your results. And then over here on the right side where it says best match, I'm going to go down and select price plus shipping equals lowest first, because that's going to show you the lowest amount that someone's willing to sell this card for. Now that we've got those filters on, we can see that there is a damaged version of this card for $5.95. And if we go down further, here's another without the condition listed in the title, but the shipping makes it a little more pricey. Here's an LP or lightly played version for 10. And again, after looking at our card, we determined it was near mint. So the first near mint version that we've come across is this here at 1347. The nice thing about shopping on eBay is that you can actually see the cards that you're wanting to purchase for most listings. You might notice here that this looks like a stock photo, so you're not going to necessarily see the exact card that you'll be receiving if you buy that card. But if we click into this top one here and hover, we can see the creases that the merchant has identified that make this card a played condition card. I personally do prefer shopping on eBay for this exact reason, and I really appreciate sellers who post detailed photos of the card so you know exactly what you're gonna be receiving. If we were to look up the same card on TCG Player, then we would enter either the set or the name. So if we come in here, we can look at Yu-Gi-Oh! if we're not sure what the set is. 
I would recommend TCG Player is a good starting point if you have a bunch of a card and kind of want to see how valuable yours is compared to other printings of it. So here we've got the Ultimate Rare, the Ultra Rare. Ours is a Secret Rare. So we're going to look at this one over here from the 2006 Collector's Tin. If we're wanting to verify that we have the right listing, we'll look here at the set number and make sure that matches the set number listed on our card. And then we can scroll down and once again, it's going to show us from the least expensive at the top down, which you can control those filters here, the value of this card. So here, once again, we can see, let's see if we can find some near mints. Sometimes you might have to scroll through several pages worth to find a near mint version. So they're actually going for a lot more here on TCG Player. Were there any on page three? No. So there. So this is a good uh, example of why you should look on multiple sites when you're gauging the pricing on your cards. If you'd started out with, oh, there we go. If you started out with TCG Player, then the first copy you'd find would be at $14.50 compared to eBay where we found one for a dollar less. Definitely something worth keeping in mind, especially if you're shopping for cards. Always compare between different websites. Now for Troll and Toad, if we look up Haman again, I'm gonna be honest, I don't use Troll and Toad as much, but it's still a good resource to keep in mind because every now and then you might be able to find a good deal. So here we see him again and we can see that he's sitting at pretty close to the same price. Here's a played version for about how much the near mints are going on the other two sites. Something else that I like about eBay is that you can go in and actually uh, view how much people are currently purchasing a specific card. So if we go down to the sold items and select that, that's going to show us all of the listings that have recently sold, how much they sold for, and when they sold. So if you go on to eBay and TCG Player and you see that your card is sold out, which does happen, especially in 2020, uh, this is a way that you can still kind of look up and gauge the value of your card even if there are none currently on the market. Please note that on TCG Player, you don't get to see the actual card you'll be receiving. That's definitely something to keep in mind and one of the primary reasons that I tend to prefer buying off of eBay. Uh, that being said, one of the advantages of TCG Player is if, especially if you're buying less expensive cards like penny stocks or uh, cheaper cards from a set, you can often get a whole bunch for considerably less than what you'd be spending on eBay because of how their payout system works. So like here you can see this Dark Magician, low is 29 cents, and then you're paying a separate shipping fee outside of the cost of the card so that the seller still makes the profit. So you can normally get a nice chunk of cards at a lower price on the actual card on TCG Player but you're running a higher risk of the card not coming in its listed condition because you don't actually see what you're getting until it arrives. Something else I'll just kind of point out about TCG Player that's pretty nice is if you're wanting to see how much something is going for in a set or if you're trying to decide if a like maybe you came across a booster box and you're like, oh, I wonder if that's a good deal and you're wanting to open it up, you can actually look at the prices for an entire set by coming in here, putting in the set name, and then you can use this filter here to kind of sort how you want to view them, uh, view the cards in it. And it'll show you like, hey, these are the most expensive cards in this set currently. To give you an idea if the set is top heavy or if there are a lot of good cards that you could potentially pull to make a profit off of opening that box. So that's something that's definitely nice about TCG Player is that you can look up something based on the entire set and kind of go through it. Or if you're not sure how many printings a certain card has, we'll look at Blue Eyes because there are like a gazillion. So we got 33 results. So if we kind of scroll through here, we can see 
there are a lot of printings of blue eyes with different artworks and it kind of can just show you what's out there. Um, and again, this is generally why you're going to be wanting to look up your values on eBay based on the set number, not the card name, because the card name is going to give you a slew of different results. If you're not sure how to gauge what condition your card is in, normally I would say you could kind of click on one of these and it would open up a help window for you. And TCG Player actually does have a nice guide that kind of details what their versions of these different terms are supposed to mean, but I'm having issues getting that to pull up right now. So the other advice I could give you is to look at cards on eBay. So here, if we see this one is lightly played, you can kind of look through, look at the card itself and see what lightly played means to that seller and clearly to that buyer because someone was willing to purchase it. And if you look through and kind of compare enough cards, you can get a good feeling of what the different conditions would be considered. So again, normally you're going to be looking at mint or near mint. A lot of sellers don't normally actually list their cards as mint just to be to kind of cover themselves just in case anything isn't quite exactly pristine as the buyer might expect. Um, but oftentimes things listed as near mint might actually be mint. But similarly, because it's not exclusively mint, you might have things listed as near mint that are actually um, have a few dings here or there. They might not be absolutely perfect. One last thing I'll touch on. If you are looking to sell your card online, then obviously you would want to figure out where the market value is at for that based on your condition and which version of the card you have, and then kind of match it or maybe go slightly under if you're wanting to move it faster. Um, I would always recommend that you post good clear photos. That's definitely gonna help you out. If you're looking to price your card because you're doing a trade, then same thing. You're gonna wanna price your trade value at around the same as what you're seeing it go for online if that person was that you're trading with was to go out and purchase it. However, if you're looking to do an in-person sale, Something to keep in mind is that anyone who is selling online like this, at the end of the day, they're not going to, if they sell their card for $10, they're only going to be pocketing about eight of that because eBay and PayPal are going to take a cut and come tax season, the government's also going to take a cut. So if uh, you would definitely have the option of offering a slightly better deal to an in-person buyer, uh, I'm sure they would appreciate the gesture and it can help you move something without having to go through the hassle of dealing with shipping and everything. Just something to keep in mind. One more thing. If you're looking up your Pokemon card values, then similar to Yu-Gi-Oh, you'll look, you, know, you can use the name to search on TCG Player and then find the appropriate set. With Pokemon, the set number is going to be on the bottom right corner of the card. Pokemon no longer does editions, but if you happen to have a card with that first edition stamp, it'll be over here. And congratulations, because those tend to be worth a pretty penny. Um, but something else to keep in mind with Pokemon cards is even if you put in the name and the set number, it's possible that you're going to have multiple printings of that card in that set. So like with Kafagrigus here, for example, if we put in his name and 52 out of 108 from Dark Explorers, you might get some with the regular Shattered Foil, and you might get some with the reverse foil. So it would be worth a quick Google search to kind of see what the differences are in the foils so that you can identify which version you have if you aren't already sure. Hope that helps. But yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any other tips for how to price cards or other sites, like if you're, I'm in the US, so everything I'm doing is based from that perspective. If you have advice for perhaps other people in your country, other good websites that you use, feel free to drop that in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.